Hi, welcome back. So I have two public announcements to make. One, my cool pens, they have stars. They were a Valentine's Day gift from me to me. I am very happy about it. Two, this week was Valentine's Day week. Now, if there's something you have to know about me is that both in middle school and high school, I was nicknamed a cold bitch. <laughs> the Italian version, uh, which was honestly far worse. Was I being bullied? Yes. But the fact remained that I was enamored by the, the idea of love, but I could not form a connection with the people that I was with. Uh, both because they were awful and honestly immature, but also because I read tons and tons of romance books that totally skewed like my vision of things like love and relationships. And recently I've read another series of books that if I had read when I was younger would have completely screwed me over. It's the uh, To All The Boys I've Loved Before series. Book one is fine, book two and three are riddled with American Puritanism. Uh, please do not take anything that is written in those books at heart because they, they were terrible. And that got me thinking, uh, what are some purely romance books, like contemporary romance books, uh, that are actually great, I think, in depicting relationship and how should you approach a partner? I've read a few and today we're going to be, you know, uh, going through them together. <laughs> Now you may ask, Alice, is that the limited edition of The Love Hypothesis by Elle Hazelwood? Yes, yes indeed it is. Uh, it's shiny and I am in what in Italian we call a gazzadra. Translator, please insert here. Um, I like shiny things a lot. Now, this is not the book that I'm going to recommend, but I don't have the physical copy of her second book. Uh, I'm going to insert her here but I'm going to, you know, still keep this here because it's shiny and pretty. Um, this one stems from a real life infection and it's really, really fun -ficky. Is that a word? But it's fun fiction like When you write an fan fiction, you of course already know the characters, so they aren't exactly introduced in the same way that normal characters would be introduced in a story. And a lot of cringy things may happen, but you know, those are tropes and things that usually appear in fanfiction. So here uh, we, we are riddled with cringy moments. In her second book, I think she got the story that was so good, like the banter, the dialogue. It was so greatly, you know, constructed in this book and got rid of the cringy stuff and, you know, actually did something great. Her second book, I gave five stars. Um, I think the fact that the characters were so well constructed while still being kind of ridiculous because the main love interest is huge, completely like surpass, surmounts the protagonist and she's so tiny and kind of quirky, she likes galaxy leggings. Um, but they were described in a way that it was funny and not cringy, I think it was very self-aware and I loved the fact that the protagonist is a whole person. She really likes her job, but she's a woman in STEM, just like I am. She ends up working for NASA uh, and she thought she was going to be the coordinator of the project alone, but no, she is going to be a co-coordinator with the person that she thinks hates her guts. That is our main love interest. Um, I think his name is Levi. I really enjoyed the story. It was I don't know, this was very well written, they had chemistry, the dialogue was very snappy and fun, and the story, while not be the most well-crafted plot, I think it was such a, like, a heartwarming story for all women in STEM. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this, and I cannot wait for Ellie Hayeswood to publish something else, uh, still in the same vein, but hopefully improved. Wow. Now, you cannot talk about romance without talking about my queen, uh, Emily Harry. I have here People We Meet on Vacation and Beach Read. Now, I have to preface saying, I don't think all Emily Henry's books, especially the, like the more recent one, are purely romance books. I think, especially Beach Read, and people are talking about the new one that is going to come out, uh, are lit thick books with heavy romance, like subplots. I think it's right. I think it's right, especially in Beach Read, this is a story about healing uh, from, you know, intense grief and also cults. 
there's a cult in this book that nobody talk about. I think this is a, a, from a marketing standpoint. I think the title is not correct, nor is the cover or the marketing surrounding it. But this story I really liked. Again, Emily Henry is, I think, the queen of writing chemistry and like well-rounded characters that you love despite them not being perfect. Also, her, her dialogue is, I think, top-notch. She can make people so fucking funny in the direst of situations while not being cringy. Um, I really like her books and I think her books only got better because Beach Read was like a solid four stars. People We Meet on Vacation I think was a four and a half stars and then uh, Book Lovers was like a five stars. I completely adored Book Lovers and I think Book Lovers was the most like purely romance books out of all the, the three recent ones. Um, if you wanted something really funny that uh, plays with uh, romance tropes uh, that has people talking about books because they are in the book publishing industry and uh, if you want something like that also very heartwarming very family oriented because uh, there's also like secrets between sisters swisters like Taylor Swifters um, definitely book lovers if you want something a little more weird and litvic Beach read. If you want something more calming and a friends to lovers that is actually very, very good, um, people we meet on vacation. Of course, being a queer woman myself, I could not like end this list without some queer titles. One of my favorites, it's Borderline Middle Grade by A, but I think it's so enjoyable even for like young adults, new adults, adults in general. Um, this is a German book that I picked up on a whim. The original title and the English title is the same, is Love is for Losers. In Italian it's the same, L'amore per sfigati by Wipke Brueggemann. Um, I think it, this was the cutest thing that I've ever read in my entire life. This talks about two girls going through the motions of falling in love and realizing that they like girls. That's the basic premise, but the two girls are so funny this is written in diary form so if you like that perfect this is basically like gay panic the book um, realizing that she really really likes this classmates of hers and it's so cute very heartwarming uh, a wonderful ending to a story and the diary format I think adds so much to it this also features like a fat cat it's here um, the cat is very prevalent in the story so if you're a cat lover this book is perfect but if you wanted something that is like a totally no-brainer, uh, it's a manga, so you don't have to really read a lot, uh, especially if you have been, you know, heartbroken on Valentine's Day or if you're having a hard time. I think mangas are a wonderful way to get back into reading. This is also a queer story. Uh, it talks about two men. They're traveling around the world. The drawings are beautiful. One of the most beautifully drawn manga that I've ever read. Uh, you should totally read and envy my limited edition copy of our Not So Lonely Planet Travel Guide by Mone Serai. These two fools are traveling around the world. When I say traveling around the world, I don't mean the typical like uh, European country like Paris, Milan. No, they went to such different countries. In the first volume, they go to Thailand, India and Georgia. Those are places I've never been to. Uh, it, it was wonderful to see such an appreciation of the cultures that they see, but there's also the fact that they are clearly in love. They know that they love each other, but there's such an obstacle in which they really want to um, profess their love to other people and to the world and get married. But in their country of origin, Japan, it's not really that safe to do so. And they meet so many queer people in their journey in every country because they're, there's queer people everywhere. And it's, ah, oh, I wanted to cry out of like contentment and happiness and joy. This is such like a queer joy manga. We'll end this list with something that it's not actually purely a romance manga. It's still a manga. Uh, but I think if you're down, if you've been heartbroken, if you have just broken up with your partner, husband, wife, whatever, or just you're having a really hard time with 
the relationships in your life, you know, friends, family, etc. I think you need something funny. I think you need something hilariously funny that also has one of the most wholesome romances in the world. It's like, ah, you reach the, the last volume and you're like, fucking finally! And it also has like one of the best animes <laughs> around uh, that you can find. It's special A. This is a ridiculous manga that came a long, long time ago. I still think about this manga a lot because it talks about a special group of kids in this private academy. Um, they're all rich, aside from the protagonist who got in with a scholarship and she's really poor, incredibly poor. And she has a rivalry because she wants to be the number one at this school uh, in everything, like grades, you know, physical activities, external activities, everything. She is very dumb, so her grades are not the best, but she's incredibly strong. She has so much like power muscles and she wants to be number one, but she's perpetually number two because the number one is her love interest. She hates him. She hates his guts. He's very clever, very emotionally disconnected. And it talks about them two realizing that they're in love, but there's also like this ragtag group of friends. They're all hilarious and stupid and idiots, like lovable idiots. I think it's the perfect way to spend the time while you're down, uh, but also when you're happy and you want to like prolong a, a long lasting happiness. <laughs> These are all my picks. Uh, I hope you found something that you're going to love. I hope that like me, even though you're a cold bitch, you can be, you know, a, a, a lover of romance books because I recently developed a really strong attachment to some of them. And yeah, I hope you had a, a lovely Valentine's Day, even though maybe you were with friends, maybe you were alone. It's okay. Um, I think love is for everybody and you'll find that there's always somebody, you know, ready to love you. Uh, even though it's platonic love, it's familiar love, there's always somebody. Um, <laughs> got a little emotional there. Uh, so I just wanted to say goodbye. If you like this video, please leave a comment down below, maybe a like. And uh, there's also like down below, you'll find all of my socials if you want to follow me. Um, I'm most active on TikTok. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mwah, mwah, mwah.